my channel and today you guys i'm gonna do a brow and an eyeliner um i guess tutorial or whatnot um i picked up this elf um lock on liner and brow cream this is in brown i picked up that because i had never used it i don't recall myself ever using this this is not a new product but I haven't used it. The thing that caught my attention, though, about this product is that I could actually line my eyes, like use this as an eyeliner, and also apply this to my brows as a brow gel. So it comes in a jar like this, and I've already got it open. I haven't tried it yet. So we're going to try it, you guys, and I'm just going to give you my opinion first impression on what I think about it. I do have my uh, YBF Your Best Friend um, brow pencil here just in case. I do have the spoolie there that I could just kind of comb out my brows the little bit that I have. Y'all, I over pluck my brows all the time. But for the style that I like, it works, okay? So I combed over my brows as you saw. That's what I normally do first. Now, a lot of times I will use a brow gel. I'm just telling you what I usually use. And I'm trying to find that. Here it is. Usually I use a brow gel. Like I'll get a compact like this that has a powder and a brow gel. And I usually go across my brows with the brow gel because I feel like when the brow gel dries, my brows stay in place. But I do have a difference, like a, a another product. Um, it's just a brow, I guess, mascara that I'm going to use instead. But usually I use a brow gel and that really just locks on locks my brow color onto my brows. I'm just saying some things that I normally use or do or whatever. Okay, so now I did uh, get this ELF um, angled eyeliner brush. Um, it was a dollar. So this would not be a brow brush, but an eyeliner brush. So I'm gonna save that for the eyeliner part, but I'm just gonna grab one of my, I guess, uh, brow brush here i have the ardell here i have a spoolie on that side and the brush on that side so i'm gonna see how well this will work with this particular gel may not be the best one because i have i have a few of them somewhere i don't see them right now but i have more than just this one like i have I forgot what brand this one is, but I, I, you know, I just like to use this one basically for the spoolie, not so much for the brush. Um, I think that's the only two that I have, but y'all, I have a lot of them, but I'm just going to use this one by Ardell. And this is normally what I do. And I'm going to try to turn this way because I'm going to do this brow on camera for you to see. Okay. I just grab a little bit, but a little bit. For me, it's usually more than just a little bit. But I got a little bit on there. And I'm going to turn my mirror this way so you can actually see me. What I like to do is I like to line my lashes or brows on the bottom. If I'm a little messy, that's fine because concealer can correct all of the mess, okay? So I'm just basically lining underneath the bottom of my brows. This is like a guideline. And also, this guides me as to how far out I want my brow to start and how far I'm going to, um, how far I want my brow to extend. In other words, I'll take this side and I'll 
go about right there. That's how long or how far out I want my brow to extend, okay? And I, that may change after I get the arch going and I look at it and I go, hmm, I think this should be a little longer. You know, it just depends. But just starting out, I think that's a perfect point to stop, okay? So then what I like to do and I still got a good bit of product on there because this is like a gel or I don't know if it's a gel formula. Let's read the bag. It says that this particular lock on liner and brow cream from ELF glides on smoothly to sculpt, shape, and define brows. Can also be used as eyeshadow and eyeliner for gorgeous, long lasting color. Directions use short brush strokes, apply color to brow or lash line okay then it has the instructions on the bottom so i'm thinking that this is just a gel or a cream it's a cream because it says lock on liner and brow cream so it's a cream so now this is probably done dried up a little bit and i want it to so that's one reason why i just stopped and read the directions because when I make this first line right here underneath my lashes, I like for that to dry because I don't want that to be moving all over the place while I'm filling in my brows and creating an arch. Because that's what I have to do is actually create an arch because my brows is thin. So now I'm going to take the product that's left on here and it's done dried up some. And what I'm doing is I'm going to basically start creating the arch. And it's a little thick. And I kind of go like in an angle here. And I go up as high as I want the arch, which I think is good. I've been really going for high arches lately with my brows. And then I'm going to come down and connect the extended part here of my brow. Now this is where the extended part can change. As you see now the extended part looks short. Okay. So for me anyways, so I'm going to bring that extended part down just a little further and okay. That looking, that is looking good to me right there. All right. So this is the time when I still like for it to dry a little bit. I know some people do not. They just go right in and fill it in and blah, blah, blah. Okay, I like for the brow gel to dry just a little bit on my lashes. So I just sit here and grab a little more gel, brow gel or whatever. And I sit here and maybe just look at what I'm going to use as far as uh, foundation and everything, I sort of get it together while that dries just a little bit, especially with brow cream, okay? Not gel, but a brow cream. Even with a brow gel, usually I just put it on and it dries quick, like a brow gel. But this is a brow cream. So with a cream, it, it doesn't dry as fast. So I give the brow cream a little time to dry so I can get a little more precise with my, you know, brow arch and all, and also with filling in my brows. Okay. So that's when I decide, okay, what kind of foundation do I want to use today? Now, usually I go with my BB cream and I probably will. I think I'm going to go with my Garnier a uh, skin active BB five in one miracle skin protector anti-aging. I love this. If you don't use this as a BB cream, you can use this as a product for SPF, something to go underneath the foundation or something for anti-aging. It's really good. I tried it yesterday and I am in love with this product. So I will put that on even if it's just a little bit, but I think I want to go in with the L'Oreal true match Lumi. Uh, foundation. I hadn't used this in years and I just saw it the other day and I went, yes, I'm going to try. Now, back in the day, I used to break out with this a little bit. And so I had to stop using it, but not to say that it wasn't one of my favorite foundations. It was my favorite because it's, it's, it's very pretty, it gives a nice glow and that's what I'm into. But hopefully that does not happen. Okay. I'm hoping that now that I'm older, maybe this will not break me out. Okay. So 
If it does, then I have to let it go and don't even try it again. But I thought I'd give it a chance one more time and because it really is a good luminous foundation and it does stay on and it gives amazing coverage. So now you guys, since I told y'all my foundation, there's other things I'm gonna use for, of course, concealer, um, bronzers, everything. But now I know my brow cream has dried. So now this is when I go in and fill in the gap there where there is no cream. And I basically draw mine on you guys because like I said, I don't have like thick brow hairs. Any of you that do have thick brow hairs, y'all are so lucky. Like seriously, I wish I had like a lot of brow hairs. I've never had thick brow hairs. My brows have always been blonde and sparse, okay? So it is what it is, okay? So now what I like to do at this point is I'm trying to fix this side where you see this little triangle there. So what I do is I grab my finger and I basically push it up as high as I want my brows because usually I like my brows higher because I like for my brow bone to like stick out, okay? So I do that and then if I can't do it because the cream is so dry, as y'all can see, I can barely budge or move this. So this is a really good brow cream, y'all. This is going to stay in place. It's really hard for me to push that on up higher. So basically, I will have to use a concealer to um, get that arch a little higher if I want to. So, and another thing is I feel like this arch is not quite right. So what I do is I take the spoolie side and I just go across it and sort of soften that arch. See there? I just softened it, okay? It doesn't have that little, that pointed top that made it look like a triangle on top. You know, like the top of a, a triangle. It doesn't look like that. So now it's, it's really smooth, but yet it's thick there. So now I can go in and fill in the top part. Now, usually what I do with the top part is I actually like to use a lighter color a lighter brow color. And usually I go with a dark blonde shade. Um, I just like my brows lighter in the front and more like deeper as it, as the brow gets to the arch. But at this, since I'm doing this uh, brow tutorial, I'm just gonna use the brow cream here. So it doesn't matter. I, I, I wear or I had my brows really intense many times so it doesn't matter with me they still look good with my makeup look at the end okay so yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and fill in the top part and i do sort of go in an angle here at the top and i did not add extra brow cream because i just don't want it really intense up there even though it's looking a bit intense uh, this is very pigmented, you guys. And this is all my first impressions as I put this on. The color is very intense, as you guys see. Now, what I do now is basically that is the brow arch. Like, I'm not going to do anything else with the brow cream. I feel like this is enough. Like, this is, like, bold. Look at this side. Look at the brows over here. We're talking about a bold brow, but I'm going to soften it up by using a concealer to go in there and just kind of sculpt my brow and get it and smooth it out just a little bit. So it doesn't look so, some people like their brows looking like this, like really thick and full and just really bold. I do like bold brows, but I don't like for my brows to look real thick and bold. I just like somewhat of a thin brow but yet a bold brow that's just how i am okay so i'm gonna use my favorite eyelid concealer and eyebrow sculpting concealer and that is the elf 16 hour camo concealer i love this concealer 
it disguises everything on my eyelids. Like you can see that I have discoloration going on on my eyelids. My eyelids is a little red today. Um, so what I do is I just dab a few dots on my entire lid, okay? And I might have to add a little extra onto my brush. You never know to scope out my brows. But then what I do is I like to get me a brush, a double-ended brush. I've probably used all of them. No, here's one. I take a double-ended brush like this. This is a profusion eyeshadow brush. Like it's a blender on this side. And then it's a flat eyeshadow brush on that side. And what I do is I go ahead and just add this or smooth the concealer all over my um, eyelid just like this smooth it out all over and especially down here by my lash line because I find that my area close to my lashes is always a bit red due to the injury everything that happened to my eye it used to not be that way but it is now so I really do um, put that concealer close to my lashes really really good and then i take this side here the eyeshadow side of this brush and a lot of times i'll dip into the concealer and i put a little concealer on my hand just like that little dab like that and i'll grab some of that concealer and this is when i go and just sculpt my brows even sometimes i'll make it thinner i'll take away some of that color and i'll create a more sharper defined arch you see me just did that then y'all see that like i basically went up a little higher right where that arch see there now my arch look a little higher so that's the good thing about this camo concealer it's so good like it's one of the best in my opinion right now in the drugstore and i just say in general like with concealers right now the elf 16 hour camo concealer you just it, you just can't beat it like look at my eyes my eyes is ready for eyeshadow and also look how i just sculpt out my brows like so neatly and so beautifully and i'm actually going over some of that brow cream by elf and thinning the brow a little bit now see my brow thinner see the arch has changed rewind a little bit and look at it from when i first applied the brow cream and then look at it now like i'm actually taking away some of that brow cream to thin my brow just a little bit and it doesn't make a mess. This, this concealer doesn't mess it up. And then what I like to do is just go right here beside the little arch area or the tail end of the brow. And I like to just go over it just to get it really neat and pretty and precise as well. And then there we go, you guys. Like basically that's it. That is my brow uh, tutorial. That's how I do my brows. Um, now, I do fix my brows in different ways. Sometimes I'm not into, like, really thick brows. Sometimes my brows is thinner. Sometimes my brow doesn't have as much uh, brow cream or um, I don't add as much brow uh, color to my brows sometimes I like for my brows to just look really natural but for this tutorial I want to show off this product the ELF lock on liner and brow cream and as you know it did lock on the color is there and when it dries it locks even more so uh, I feel like if you're going to shift your brows and when I say shift your brows I mean if you're going to change your brow um say arch or something maybe you didn't put it on quite right you have to go right in immediately and and try to take it off because this does lock on okay 
and I have to say that the cream is really nice. It's, it does glide on real smooth. Um, and I do feel like you can get a very precise and well-defined brow using this product. And this product is like $4. So that is a really great deal. So yeah, you guys, like basically this brow is done. So now I need to just go ahead and do this side. And then I need to put on my makeup because I basically... No, I'll come back and do, no, 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 let me think. Okay, after I do my brows, I'm going to do my eyeshadow, and then we'll get to the liner and see what it looks like um, on my lash line, okay? So, yeah, you guys, let me go ahead and finish this brow, put on a little eyeshadow, and then we'll get to the eyeliner. Or use the same brow cream and liner cream and see what it looks like on my lash line. Okay, be back. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I have my eyes prepared. It's a little more, it's very dramatic, but it's gonna come together with foundation and all, but I want y'all to know what I used. Um, I did use the Hard Candy uh, Glycerazzi Eyeshadow Duo here. This one is in um, Shooting Star. And I did use the Fairy Tale Color Cosmetics uh, Palette number two. I did use that. And I also used um, Birthday Blast here, which I love this palette. It's one of my favorites. I use a few colors out of it. So now, what I'm about to do um, is the liner. It's time for the liner port and all so now i'm gonna grab the elf lock on liner and brow cream here and i'm gonna use this as my liner um i don't know how well i'm gonna like this into my waterline or whatever but i will find out uh, this was the darkest shade that i could find in the store i prefer like really dark liner but I could not find one so this is the darkest one that they had but before I do that you guys I have to think I haven't even wiped some of the eyeshadow <coughs> from around my eyes so now I'm going to apply this to my lash line and I do have an ELF angled eyeliner brush here I have this, I have like probably five of these somewhere in my collection because I bought so many back in the day and I kept them washed and you know what, I couldn't find them. And so I bought this one because this was on sale for a dollar. So I haven't used any liner except for pencil liners into my waterline and I love the liner to be very bold on my liner or on my inner what is it my waterline sorry I like for it to look really bold so sometimes I dip and dip and dip for more shadow until I get the desired amount of liner on my waterline so that's something to think about i feel like i have to dip a few times into the pot here to get more shadow so that it looks deep enough and as you can tell this is not like the darkest liner i feel like it would look better if i had a darker liner but i'm able to put it in there and I'm not, like, my eyes is not burning. It's not watering up. Um, I'm not having any sensitivity to it. So far, so good. But I don't know what it would do later, but just, like, putting it on right now, it just, it feels, it feels normal, okay? 
I was going to get the L'Oreal Infallible Liner because that's the one I used to be a huge fan of it. Like, I used that liner like crazy. But the last time I had bought one, I could tell that they had changed the formula because the liner wasn't staying in place um, all day like it had done before. That's why it's called Infallible. Um, it would just stay in place. So, y'all... I'm tracing back over the first eye that I had placed the liner into my waterline. I just feel like the color is not deep enough for what I like. So you might have to trace over a little bit for eyeliner. So personally, I'm telling you that I like this product better for a gel or a cream um, color for my brows. So now I'm just going to trace. I really don't want to do my waterline on top just because that's where my lashes, uh, that's where I had a lot of issues with my eye injury. So I'm just gonna line the top lash line, okay? I'm not gonna get into the waterline right up in here. Sometimes I have done that probably twice but I did not like that. After I did it, I thought, no, my eye, it just felt really uncomfortable. So I don't do that. I just wear the line right on top of my lashes because that doesn't bother me after what happened to my eyes and all. It just doesn't bother me to line my top lash line. There it is. It's lined. It's not my favorite as liner, you guys. I'm not impressed. It works, but probably because I did such a dramatic eye, I need a darker liner. I feel like if I had done like a natural eye makeup look, this would look okay. Probably. But I'm not liking it as an eyeliner. I really don't. Unless when it dries, it really surprised me. Because this product, it has to dry. And so maybe when it dries, I'll think differently. Like I could say, ooh, I love it. You know, it just doesn't look good while it's damp or whatnot. But when it dries... It looks really good. I don't know, you guys, but so far, just first impression, I don't like this as a liner. So what I'm going to do now, but first of all, I want to say this before I go on to what I was about to say. Um, it does glide on. It doesn't tug my eyes. It didn't hurt my eyes. Um... So that's a good thing. That's a very, very good thing. Um, I just don't like, I just don't like it as liner. I feel like it's just a little bit too creamy. I like the eyeliner to glide on my lash line, but I don't want the liner to be so creamy that it's real easy to get, like you can zigzag and not be so, uh, precise. You, so you, you can mess up easily, what I'm saying. The product is very creamy, and so it's easy to maybe get the line a little too thick into the inner corner or on the edge. You may, you may go off a little bit as far as the color may come out a little too far out on the side. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's so creamy, I feel like it's so easy to create a mess or to create mistakes. So once again, I don't like it as liner, but I love these brows. Like these brows are so fierce, so bold, and they are on there because I mean, this is like tattoo brows, okay? <laughs> like <laughs> it's really, really good. So now I'm going to use my Mally. Uh, Shaping Secret Eye Lift Stamp. 
Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a little wing. The mascara I will be using, if any of you is curious, is the Believe Beauty Volumized Mascara and the Believe Beauty Extended Lash Lengthening Mascara. I use both of these. Um, I wish I could put on a pair of lashes, but I can't. Um, so yeah, you guys, that's basically what I'm about. What I'm about to do is just finish my eyes. Then I'm gonna go in and do my makeup, and I'll tell you the other makeup I will be using. As you know, you know I'm gonna use my Garnier um, Skin Active BB Five in One Miracle Skin Protector Anti-Aging um, Product, and I will be using the L'Oreal Lumi Foundation here as my foundation and everything else i will tell you okay at the once i get done and get all fixed up okay so i will be back you guys yes okay you guys i am back this is the look the complete look and so yeah just getting to the main product okay as you know as I told y'all, this was a brow tutorial and I was using a new product that I had not used. If I use this product, I cannot remember, but I do remember when it came out. So I might have used it back in the day. I'm trying to think, but I don't think I did. And if I did, I forgot about it, okay? But this, the product is the ELF Lock On Liner and Brow Cream. I have mine in dark brown. I prefer black, but this is what I have. And just getting to um, <clears throat> the product. Like I told y'all, I'm not gonna go back over everything. I think this is really, really good for the brows. Look at my brows. I mean, yeah. My brows look amazing. Like they're drawn on, but they look wonderful. They look like I've had my brows tattooed. That's what it looks like to me. And so it's very good for that. And it locks on, it does. Once it dries, first of all, let me go back. It is a cream. So when you put it on, it can be a little, I guess you have to be very careful because it's easy to make mistakes when you have a real creamy product. But however, concealer can uh, correct any mistake as far as creating or, or just creating your brows or, or arching your brows. But I'm just saying it's very creamy. But once it dries, it looks really amazing. And it does lock, okay? Because I do have this on my lash line and on my top lash line, and so far, it has not smudged, it's still in place after me putting on all of my makeup, putting on more primers, everything, my BB cream, my Lumi foundation, I mean, my liner is still on there. So, I prefer this product for my brows over a liner because with the liner once again the product is a cream it's real easy to just sort of mess up okay maybe if you want to get it right into the waterline it may be a little difficult because the brush wants to slide because the product is creamy um, but some of you may not have that problem. Some people are just really great at certain things or just a little bit better at doing something than somebody else I do not prefer this product as a liner even though it looks okay look at my eyes like yes it works as a liner but if i had to choose between the liner and my brows i would go for my brow so this is like a brow cream for me more than a liner and i do feel like that because this is not black i think that's that's one reason why i do not like it as much because it's a dark brown now um not to forget that you can use this product as an eyeshadow as well maybe as an eyeshadow base so i did not try that but it states or the the details on the back of the package does state that this can be used as an eyeshadow so that's a good thing and um once again my eyeliner looks good but i don't prefer it as you know I, I would not want this as an eyeliner but for my brows sure 
sure I will use this over and over again for my brows. Um, the brush here, the ELF angled eyeliner brush here, it's okay. I wouldn't get this to line my eyes because I feel like because the brush hair is there, it's not like really straight and firm. It's like loose. Like, look at that. It's so loose. Um, I, I just think that that might have been the issue with me not being able to get this cream product into the waterline real nice and precise. So um, I would have to try this cream product here with another like eyeliner brush. So I'm not a big fan of this brush, but I remember having like I don't know how many of these brushes I, I bought back in the day. I did. I bought a lot of ELF products. I had a lot of them, and I can remember not liking this liner brush back then. But anyways, you guys, this product, I will give a thumbs up because look at my brows. Like, Like, my brows look really nice. Now, I know some people do not like drawn-on brows or they feel like it's just too much. But, y'all, when you have thin, sparse brows, you got to draw them on or you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And if you're looking for a brow cream that's like $4, here's one right here by ELF. It's the ELF um, Lock-On Liner and Brow Cream right there. That's the one to try. So looks great. So I give this product a thumbs up. So I do like it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell you some of the products, most of the products that I did use to finish my makeup look because y'all didn't get to see all of that because the video is more about that brow cream. Now I did use... Um, my foundations, as y'all know, I use the Garnier Skin Active BB 5-in-1 Miracle Skin Protector, and it's great for anti-aging or has anti-aging uh, benefits in it. So I did use this first, and then I did use the L'Oreal True Match Lumi healthy luminous makeup here. I did use both of these. And like I said, this product you can use with foundations or other BB creams. It just really, just really looks good. Like doubled up with another foundation or a BB cream or whatnot. This looks good. Or you can use this alone. It's up to you. But you do get that SPF protection. You get a lot of things. I talked about that in another video about how it's it's supposed to help help out with like firming and also wrinkles and all sorts of things so yeah you guys this is really good so that's what i used on my face today as foundation and then of course as moisturizers you guys know i use the bolero hydrating Facial Gel Hydrator it has watermelon and aloe in it. Love this stuff. And also my favorite, Pond's Perfect Color Complex Beauty Cream. It's for normal to dry skin. Amazing. Together. Amazing. I put on both of those. Plus, I put on the Collab Pep Talk primer and skin booster i love the smell of this this smells like fresh lemons and grapefruit and it just feels so nice and hydrating on the skin you guys i'm gonna do a review on about this product eventually but yeah i did use this and yeah my skin is luminous okay and i like that all right, now we got that out of the way. Now, the other foundation that I used, but I didn't use this foundation. I used it as a contour stick, the little contour that you see there, right up in here and up in here. I used the Maybelline Superstay Multi-Use Foundation Stick in Warm Coconut. That's what I used. Very nice uh, color for me to contour with very beautiful i love it it just looks great and it works well with luminous foundations 
because some uh, foundation sticks you just can't use with luminous foundations. It just doesn't work. But so a lot of times the product is too matte and then you're trying to blend it out on luminous skin or your skin is, I guess you can say a little oily and you're trying to blend out something that's really matte. A lot of times it looks choppy, but with this one here, the Maybelline Superstay, uh, multi, what is it? Multi-use uh, foundation stick. You can use this with a luminous base or luminous foundation. Okay. Very nice. Love it. Highly recommend that because it is my favorite. Once again, that's in warm coconut. If you're, if you're wondering what shade I use, I love that. Okay. To set everything because my face was really looking like really looking oily because like I said, I use two uh, moisturizers and then actually the primer by Collab is the moisturizer too. So I'm like using three moisturizers, which produces a very beautiful luminous glow on my skin. So sometimes I look a little oily. So I went in with the Palladio wet dry foundation that I just picked up the other day. Mine is an everlasting tan. So I did set my face with this powder. It's not super matte and, and I don't want nothing super matte because I'm into the luminous look. So therefore, I'm just going to say that I like the way my skin look luminous. So therefore, I like this powder because it's not really like matting up everything and taking away the glow that I have on my skin. So yeah, um, I've used that today. Okay. Yes, I did. Let me just place that back there. And for bronzer, I use my favorite bronzer. I feel like I finally found the right bronzer for me. And I've been through a lot of bronzers. And I have to say, this bronzer seems to be the best bronzer I've ever used. I just love it. It's warm tone, but it's enough that it looks great on me. And the foundations that I've been using, or better yet, the BB creams that I've been using, just wonderful. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in What Shady Beaches. Yes. I love this because honestly, this bronzer do have a little sheen to it. So it just intensifies all of the, um, it just intensifies the glow that's going on on my skin. And I love that, but it doesn't, it's not so, uh, it's not so luminous that it looks like it's, oily you know what i'm saying it just has like this beautiful like natural glow um type of bronzer it's, it's that type of bronzer it's a little shiny but not overly shiny where it looks like a a highlighter it doesn't look like a highlighter it does look like bronzer but it does give a sheen okay so i really love this bronzer and it is my favorite i don't use nothing else except for this bronzer it's just that good okay so i would highly recommend that if you're looking for a bronzer another powder i use is this mark jacobs powder here my first Marc Jacobs product. I love this powder because even though I do set my under eyes with this and I do set the center of my face with this and my chin and my nose, it's somewhat of a highlighter, but it's not so bright and vivid that you cannot set the under eyes or you cannot set your face. It actually produces this really nice, beautiful, uh, glow and this is not a new product. I remember girls or people talking about this like a few years back But y'all I'm just now trying it. It's new to me and I love this powder And so I do set my under eyes once again in my face and all of that and this is the I think accomplish um powder I like it. Highly recommend it. It's beautiful. I love it. So I use it on a daily. That's how much I love it. 
All right, as far as concealer, I use the Collab uh, No Flaws Under Eye Concealer in Light Peach. I love this. Because it's a peach color, it really does uh, color correct my um, dark circles underneath my eyes. It just brightens up my under eye point blank. And it just takes a little bit of this to get that brightening effect and to get that coverage. So I really like that. And that's the concealer that I do or did use, even though I have all this luminous going on or the, all this glow going on my skin, you would think I would get a luminous concealer, but I just didn't want to. I didn't want everything to look luminous and glowy. So I went with a more of a matte type of concealer and that's this collab concealer here. So that it wouldn't look like everything is just like so glowy and I didn't want to look super duper oily. Okay, so as far as um, blush, I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trio in Berry Amour, or I me mean, Berry Adore, and I like this one. So I basically focused on this peach-like color right here. It's sort of orange-like. It's sort of peachy but orange-like. So I, I focused on that color there on my cheeks because this color actually matches my eyeshadow up here above my crease. So yeah, I just focused on that color there. And so yeah, that's what I use as blush. And you know, as mascaras, I use the Believe Beauty Volumized Mascara on the top lashes. And I also went back in with the Believe Beauty Extended Lash Lengthening Mascara on the top lashes. Now on my bottom lashes, I just use the Believe Beauty Extended Lash Lengthening Mascara on the bottom. I didn't use the volume because so sometimes I feel like when I use the volume and the lengthening mascara here on the bottom lashes, it looks really just looks too much. It looks like it's just what super duper clumpy. And I feel like the the product gets onto my skin sometimes. So I just decided just to use the extended uh, lash lengthening mascara by Believe Beauty on my bottom lashes. And it worked out very well. So that's my favorite combination as far as mascaras. That's what I've been using. The only thing is my lips. I use as a lip liner, the Jordana Easy Liner for Lips in Coco Loco. That's what I use. I line my lips and then I filled my lips in. And then I use the Femme Couture Rose All Day Lipstick in Baru. I think that's the name of it. It's like this pale nude. So that's why I use the lip liner in Coco Loco and this uh, lipstick in Baru because it's like a pale like nude color. So together it gives me just the natural um, natural color nude lip that I need for my skin tone. So yeah, you guys, that's what I use. So that's about it. You guys, I've showed y'all my, um, eyebrow tutorial. I told you what else I use, everything that I use. I did use, oh, oh, oh no, that's one more thing. Now for highlighter, I do use my color story euphoria, Baked eyeshadow palette, which I love. I use three shades to highlight with, and that's the highlight that you see. I love these three colors together because I get this natural light highlighter with all the glowy, like the glowy finish and the luminous finish that I got. I don't want something like real hard on my cheeks as a highlighter. I prefer something just as nice and luminous, but not like too harsh but something soft like but yet glowy and i can use these three eyeshadow shades to get this nice highlighter on top of my cheeks and that is this shade here and this shade right there the yellow gold and then this gold shade right there i mix all three of those together and then i just tap that on top of my cheeks and that is my highlighter. 
I love this palette. I will talk more about this palette and probably do some swatches because this palette you can use wet and dry. Um, and if you use a lot of these colors dry, no matter of like this purple and this blue and these uh, real hot pinks and some of these bolder colors, if you use it dry, you can still put those colors into the crease and actually be able to sport those colors during the daytime. They're not just like colors you would like put on for nighttime or night out or whatnot. But if you use these colors dry, you can use them every day. They look very nice and natural. Okay, seriously. And some of these shades are highlighters or you can use as highlighters. So I will do or create a video about this eyeshadow palette at some point in time. So yeah, you guys, um, that's about it. I told y'all the other eyeshadow palettes that I use, I use that uh, Hard Candy Glyceroxy um, Eyeshadow Duo, the golden one in Shooting Star. I use that one and then I use the Color Cosmetics Fairy Tale palette in number two and the Birthday Blast palette, I showed you that at the beginning, like what I was going to use as eyeshadows. So yeah, you guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and please don't forget to subscribe. I will appreciate that. And yes, you guys, I will see y'all in my next video, and thank you for watching. Come back. Bye. How you breathe